Hey there. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at audio buses, and I'm going to show you some very simple ways to set up audio buses inside your digital audio workstation. To put it simply, an audio bus is an audio pathway through your door. And this can be as simple as just setting a bus for the input and the output channel. So our input channels are where our microphone or instruments are coming into the software. So we need to have a bus to even hear that sound coming into the door. And I've got a simple stereo left right bus set up for my input. And I've got my studio monitors set up to the left and right stereo output bus. I can also add further buses, which is handy if I've got more inputs and outputs on my audio interface or if I'm working in surround sound. We can get a little bit more complicated as well and set up buses for things like studio effects. So we might have external studio units or we might have different performers in the studio and we want to set up buses coming out of our audio outputs into a headphone mixer. So there's lots of different options there inside audio connections. At the moment, I'm just going through a number of different lead vocal tracks and I've got these different lead vocal sections on different vocal tracks in my track list. And I'm just going to color them so that you can probably get a better idea of where the lead vocals are. Now, because there's a number of different lead vocal tracks, I need to make sure that they're basically all going through the one bus. And at the moment, I've set up a group track. Now, a group track is basically a destination for all of these individual vocal tracks. So you can see that they're all routed to a different output to my other tracks inside the mix console. They're going through their individual channels, and then they're coming out through this one group bus right here. But if I remove this group bus, I'm removing that output that I set up for all of these lead vocals. So when I press play, I'm not going to be able to hear them. And that's because if we go over to the mix console again, that routing output is blank. Now, I can fix this by setting up a new bus, and this is really important. You can right mouse click on selected channels and add a group channel. I want it to be a stereo group channel, and I'm naming it. So now that I've done that, I can see my lead vocal group channel here, and I can see that those vocals are now metering, and they're feeding straight through into that group track. I can also set up another bus send from this group track. So I've got an effects channel next to it, and I've set up the send to go through that effects channel, and now I can control the volume of the actual effect itself, and I can also control the send level. So these two channels are now being routed through my stereo output. So there's a number of different buses and processes that are going on from this one lead vocal track. And you can see them in the channel overview window here. If I click on this little icon, I can see that my lead vocal is basically going straight through into my group channel and then into my stereo output. And I can also see the sends that I have set up and that's sending that audio signal path or that bus straight over into my effects channel. We can also see our input and output routing here in the project window. And I've got these sort of coral R's which aren't routed through anything just yet. And right now, I just wanna show you the difference between a group channel and a VCA fader. So I'm adding a VCA fader to these coral tracks here and I can't hear anything, even though the VCA fader is metering and you can see all of those faders moving. And that's because no audio signal is going through the VCA fader. It's basically controlling those audio tracks that I've routed or connected the VCA fader to. Now, when I route all of these channels through a group channel, you can start to hear the track. And that's because the audio signal is being sent through into that group bus. Software instruments also have routing options internally as part of their internal effects and of course coming in and out of the software. So for instance inside of Groove Agent SE3 I'm clicking on this pad and I'm just increasing the send to auxiliary 1 and if I go over to the auxiliary tab inside the mixer section there's a reverb added there. So increasing that send is basically opening up that audio path or that bus to the auxiliary channel 
inside Groove Agent SE3's internal mixer. These flexible internal routing options means that I can add further ambience or effects to individual drum pads or even a group of drum pads. But it gets even more flexible because I can actually change the output routing and create further buses or audio paths for individual pads coming out of the instrument and into the mix console simply by clicking on a pad and using the drop down menu. And as I do this, so I'm adding another external bus right now, you can see that a new channel has appeared in my mix console. So now I've got the main output of Groove Agent and to the right of that, I've got Percussion 1 and snare. So my sound from these pads is purely isolated to the outputs that I have selected. Now that gives us even more mix options or mix control, I guess, because now instead of mixing internally inside of Groove Agent SC, I've set up these external buses for these sounds to come out of Groove Agent. And I can also do this by activating more outputs in this little drop down menu right here. I simply select the outputs that I want to activate and they'll be added down into my mix console. These outputs are automatically activated as soon as we select a new output. So if I go back to the activate outputs drop down menu, you can see that that's automatically been assigned, activated, and now it's in my mix console. Now we can also apply the same principles that we did earlier on by adding effects or adding group channels to the selected tracks that are coming out of our software instruments. Setting up buses inside of Cubase is a really important part of music production and it's really simple. Thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this.